Access control restricts access to parts of your code from code in other source files and modules. This feature enables you to hide the implementation details of your code and to specify a preferred interface through which the code can be accessed and used. Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I'm going to work through two simple projects to show you how each of the five different access levels of access controls in Swift can apply to your project's code. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to implement them and get an understanding of how they apply to frameworks and Swift packages. And along the way, you might learn some new coding techniques. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. You can assign a specific access level to individual types, classes, structures, and enumerations, as well as to properties, methods, initializers, and subscripts belonging to those types. Protocols can be restricted to a certain context, as can global constants, variables, and functions. So Swift provides five different access levels for entities within your code. And these access levels are relative to the source file in which the entity is defined, and also relative to the module that the source file belongs to. These five levels are private, file private, internal, public, and open. And these are from the most restrictive to the least restrictive. And the best way to explain these different levels of access is by example. Now these examples might be somewhat contrived, but I hope that I'll get the point across. I'm going to start with the most restrictive first. So consider this simple Swift UI project. You can download the starter project from the link in the notes below. And even if you don't have any experience with Swift UI, that shouldn't stop you from understanding the concept I'm covering here. There is one class called person and it has a single property called ID with a default string assigned as secret ID. When the application launches, this view appears, and it creates an instance of the person class and displays the ID on the screen. It does this in the Swift UI way by changing the value of the ID variable, which in turn refreshes the screen. And that's all you really need to know about Swift UI for this video. Access to the ID property of person is the default access level for an application, and that's internal. Internal classes and members can be accessed anywhere from within the same module that they are defined. And you typically use internal access when defining an app or a framework's internal structure. Since it is the default access level, we don't have to specify that for our property. If we want to exclude access, we can mark the property as private. Now this causes an error in our code, but it does ensure that the ID can't be modified. The private access restricts the use of an entity to the enclosing declaration and to extensions of that declaration that are in the same file. And you typically use a private access to hide the implementation details of a specific piece of functionality whose details are used only within a single declaration. Now we could have made ID a constant but perhaps we don't want to be able to modify the ID, but still display it. And one way to do this is to create a function in your class that will be available internally and will simply return the value of the ID. So we can create this function called displayID that simply returns the ID. And because displayID is within the declaration, it does have access. So now we can update our onAppear function to call the displayID function. Now let's say we have a management class that does have the ability to modify that ID and only certain people have access to that class. Well, what we can do is create that class inside the same file as our person class. Now inside that class, I'm going to create a static function called update ID that will change the ID for a person. So it'll take two parameters, the person and a string with the new ID. Now, ID is still private, and our update ID function is not within the person declaration, so it doesn't have access to it any more than our content view did. And this is where our third control level comes in, file private. And it restricts the use of an entity to the defining source file. So you typically use file private access to hide the implementation details of a specific piece of functionality 
when those details are used within an entire file. So if we change the access level of ID to file private, it will still be hidden from content view, but it's now available to the function within the file. So to check this out, let's return to our content view and update our onAppear function to display the original ID. We'll wait for 5 seconds and call the management ID function to update the ID and set the value of our state variable to the new display ID so that our view refreshes. And for this we use the dispatchq.main.async and use the delay of now plus 5 seconds before executing the call to our management update ID function. So let's test. After launching, we see our original ID, and after 5 seconds, the ID changes. So we've covered the first three of our access control types, internal, private, and file private. To cover the other two, we're going to have to switch to another project and for this, I'm going to use a Swift Playground. It's quite simple, so let's just create a new playground, and I'm just going to call it Access Control Part 2. Now inside that playground, I'm going to create a struct called Product, and it has two constant properties, Name as a string, and Price a double. Within that same file, but outside of the product struct, I'll create a class called Purchases that has one property and one function. The property is an array of empty product. The function will call calculate price. that's going to return a double representing the sum of all of our product prices. And for this, we can use the higher order reduce function on our collection of products. Now if you don't understand this function, I recommend you check out my video on that where I go over this and much more detail. This takes all of the prices and reduces it to the sum. So we can create a new customer that is an instance of purchases and add some products to the products array. So we'll add a Mac Pro at 5,999 Canadian and a Pro Display that goes for 4999 Now we can create an instance method, calculate price, to get our total price. There's nothing really new here. All the properties and functions are internal, and thus available to us in this playground. Now, as you become more experienced in your software development careers, you'll start to work with other developers and utilize packages and frameworks, and you'll learn how to create your own and this adds a new level of access control issues. If you're interested in creating Swift packages, take a look at my video on using Swift Package Manager. To simulate the use of frameworks, I'm going to create a new file in the Sources folder of the Playground, so let's reveal the structure and create that file, which I'll call My Framework. Back showing the playground, I'm going to split the screen in two using option click on the My Framework file so that it's showing on the right and my playground on the left. And now I'm going to cut out our struct and class and paste that into the My Frameworks file. Now if I were doing this in a Xcode project, there would be no issue. But in a playground, creating a file in the Sources folder is different. This file, and all other Swift source files in the sources directory of this playground, will be pre-compiled into a framework which is automatically made available to the playground. So as far as the playground is concerned, this is a different module. So we get some unresolved identifiers because by default, all structs and classes in a module are internal only. You can only, without modifying access control rights, see them if they are in the same module. So let's take a look at how we can rectify this situation and in the process gain a better understanding of access control. Now the first thing I'm going to do is comment out my playground and try to recreate it one step at a time. Eventually I want to be able to use the same code, but in order to do that I'm going to have to modify the access controls in my framework. 
So if I start with let new customer equals, we see that purchase is not showing in code completion. It's simply not available. When using a framework, you need to open up access to other modules. And there are two different access controls that will do that, open and public. Open and public enable entities to be used within any source file from their defining module, and also in a source file from another module that imports the defining module. So this is where we are right now. These entities are internal, and in order to make them available to the playground, we need to make them open or public. So let's start with public. Since we're dealing with the purchases entity, let's make that public first. When we do that, I see that purchases is now available to me in the code completion, but I don't see my initializer. It says that the purchases initializer is inaccessible due to the internal protection level. So let's make the initializer public too. So how do we do this? Well, we just create an empty public initializer. Now, returning to the playground, when I try to add some products to my new customer, I don't get the products variable available to me as it's internal to the framework only. So we need to make it public as well. However, as soon as we do that, my initializer complains because it says that it can't be declared public because its type is an internal type. So let's change that. And with that done, I can create an empty array of products. However, when I try to create our product purchases, the product struct shows up in code completion, but I don't get the memberwise initializer for our product struct. The product initializer is inaccessible due to an internal protection level. So there is no initializer for our struct. It has a memberwise initializer. So what do we do? Well, we have to create one if we want to make our struct accessible from outside our framework. Great, so now we can create our products for purchase. Again, we'll create a Mac Pro, the price of $599, and the Pro Display, the price of $499. When we try to calculate our total, we start with the let total equals new customer, but code completion again isn't available. Well, guess why? We need to make this publicly accessible as well. And now we can calculate our total price. We can ship our framework now. Let's remove our commented code as it's the same. Brilliant, as Paul Hudson would say. Now, if we want to access the products and prices for each individual item, we'll still have a problem. For example, if I wanted to know what the name of the first item was, I start with new customer dot products zero, and when I press dot, there's no code completion. So I have to go back to my framework and make both the name and price public. And now it's accessible to us. Now prices change all the time. So let's change the price variable to a var from a let. And within our code in the playground, let's change the price of the Mac Pro, that's the product zero dot price, to $1,000 and calculate a new price. Nice, I'll purchase. Well, the problem is that purchase has already been made and in this company, there is no backdating to get better prices. Once the purchase has been made, we want to disable the ability to change the price. So we can do that by assigning an access level of price to be private set. Now, if you're not familiar with this designation, which prevents the modification of a stored property from outside of a class or struct, take a look at this video. And in this video, I go through this and much more. Now, this may not be what you want, though, as it prevents our playground from seeing the individual prices once purchased. And one way around this would be to create a computed property in the struct that is publicly accessible and that will display the price. 
So now instead of displaying the price, which isn't available, we can display purchase price and it's not modifiable as it's a computed property. Now just as a little bit of an aside, we can remove the initializer from the product struct and turn over the responsibility to creating the purchases to the purchase class. And we can do that by creating a function that will append to the products array. So public function new purchase that accepts a name, string, and a price double. And inside that function, we can say new product is equal to product name, name, price, price. And we know that product is available because as far as this module is concerned, it's internal. And now we can append that to the products array. And now with this public function, we no longer need the public initializer for our struct. And back in our playground, we can just remove this code or comment it out for now and do new customer dot new purchase and pass in Mac Pro and a price of $5.99 and another one that will pass in Pro Display the price of $4.99 and it works just as before and is cleaner. Now our store wants to cater to seniors by offering a discount to anyone over 55 and we don't want to change the framework so this is going to be temporary and we're going to allow the users of our API to create a new discount purchases class that will be a subclass of the purchases class on our playground. However, if we try to do this, we see we get cannot inherit from non-open class purchases outside of its defining module. And there's our key. It's a non-open class. So we can convince management to open up that class for subclassing. We change it from public to open. Let's introduce two new variables. One is age as an int, and the other will be a discount price as a computed property that will return a 10% discount if over 55, otherwise no discount. And now we can create our class initializer to initialize the age and call the super init. Now with that in place, let's try to override calculate price function to apply the discount. We get one more error. Again, overriding a non-open instance method outside of its defining module. So let's go back to our framework and make the function open instead of public. Now all we need to do is return the value calculated by the superclass and then scale it by a factor of 1 minus the discount percentage divided by 100. Now our store clerk can use this new discount purchases class for all customers. They just need to ask for proof of age. If you're over 55, you get a discount. If you're 55 or younger, you don't. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.